Let's play Two Truths and a Lie. 1. Some infinities are bigger than other infinities. 2. There are infinite numbers between 0 and 1. 3. There's a bigger infinite set of numbers between 0 and 2. The first statement is true, but you'll have to take my word for it. We'll revisit this topic in a future video. The second is pretty obviously true since we can take 0.1 and repeatedly add a zero to the front to create a new, smaller number forever. Can it really be the case that there are just as many numbers between 0 and 1 as there are between 0 and 2? Well, to understand this question, let's go back to the basics. Let's say you've got some apples and some oranges. How would you check to see if you had the same number of apples as oranges? The obvious answer is to just count up the number of each and check if they're the same. What we're actually doing here is creating a mapping between the fruits and the natural numbers. We then make sure that we mapped the same numbers and say that the amount is the same if they match. However, let's say that there's a ton of apples and oranges. How can we be confident that we don't accidentally miscount when we try to compare them? We can completely cut out the step of mapping them to the natural numbers. What we do is pick up one apple and one orange, pair them together, and eat them. Repeat this until we run out of either apples or oranges. If we run out of both at the same time, it means we had the same amount of apples and oranges. If there are any leftover fruit, then the two sets are not the same size. In math, we call a perfect pairing where each apple has exactly one orange friend and each orange has exactly one apple friend a bijection. Now, let's apply what we know about bijections to the natural numbers and the non-negative even numbers. As a side note, you may notice that I start counting at zero. There is no agreement as to whether zero is a natural number. Mathematicians traditionally exclude it, but computer scientists typically include it. I'm a computer scientist, so I'm going to include it for my videos. So let's see if we can make a bijection between the naturals and the non-negative evens. Well, it seems like 0 matches with 0, 2 with 2, and so on, leaving the odd numbers with no friend. But don't be fooled. To show that they're different sizes, we can't show that there is one way to pair them up that doesn't work. We have to show that all ways to pair them up won't work. It's like if we had three apples and oranges with the apples labeled 0, 1, 2, but the oranges 0, 0, 0. We then say that there's more apples than oranges because apples 1 and 2 don't have any friends. This doesn't make sense because we don't have to pair them up just based on their label. In fact, we can relabel the oranges 0, 1, 2 so that it's more clear. It's easy to be tricked by the naturals and the non-negative evens because they look so similar but we have to treat them like they're two completely different languages. Just like how Spanish and English are two different languages, even though they share many of the same letters. Imagine that the naturals are apples and the evens are oranges. It becomes less obvious if one is bigger than the other. Can we find a way to pair them up now? Yes, we can. All we do is take a natural number and make it friends with two times itself. So zero is friends with zero, 1 with 2, 2 with 4, 3 with 6, and so on. Does each natural have a friend that is an even number? Absolutely. By definition, an even number is one that is divisible by 2. And does each even number have a natural friend? Yes, we just divide the even number by 2 to find its friend. At the beginning of the video, I started with looking at the numbers between 0 and 1, and the numbers between 0 and 2. If we replace the naturals with 0 to 1 and the non-negative evens with 0 to 2, we see that we can use the same logic to show that they're also the same size. Just multiply the number from 0 to 1 by 2 to get the appropriate friend on the other side. So the naturals and the non-negative evens ended up working out, but what about the naturals and the integers? The naturals go on infinitely in one direction, but the integers go infinitely in both. So surely the integers must be bigger, right? Well, no. If we oscillate between positive and negative to reorder the integers to 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, and so on, it becomes more obvious that we can line up the naturals and the integers together to make a perfect pairing. The reason is that 
as long as we have some method to list out the numbers, we'll have a bijection to the naturals. The first number maps to the first natural, the second number to the second natural, etc. In other words, any infinite set that we can list out such that each element can be found on the list is the same size as the natural numbers. At this point, you might be wondering if there really are different kinds of infinities, since they're all the same as long as they can be enumerated. As I alluded to at the beginning, there are. In fact, there are infinitely many different kinds of infinities. For now, just remember that while it may seem hard at first, sometimes there are ways to compare apples and oranges.